Thank you, Tembi. It is very difficult to convince a person who spent the entire life in a camp to participate in environmental conservation activities. <laughs> Orphans growing up during the war and relying only on food rations. Traumatized people returning home and looking at forests and trees only in terms of the product they gain from them. People suffering from dependency syndrome, where anything given to them is not enough. It is difficult, but not impossible. The war began when I was just two years old. I grew up in the same camp and depended on the same food ration. When I returned home, I saw how people decimate forest and woodland to gain fuel wood and income. And with that, I saw the potential of youth to make a change. But first, let me give you a background of what happened. Both the government forces of Uganda and the Lotus Eastern Army, LRA, which was made popular during the, um, the Corn 212 campaign, used a semi scorched policy during the 20 years war. The government forces cleared seven kilometers on both sides of highways and security road. They also went ahead and cleared several kilometers outside all the camps. And they were actually setting fire in the woodland for 20 years, every dry season. And you can imagine the impact on biodiversity and forest regeneration. The rebels also occupied the forest, because that was their best place, and got engaged in massive lumbering and charcoal production to exchange with ammunition with Sudanese government. The communities also would escape from the camp, and others would, would be escorted to go to the nearby Ulan um, to get some charcoal, I mean to, to, to make some charcoal, to supplement the little um, food ratio they were given in the camp. When the gun was getting silent and people were returning back to their homes, there was already another war, which I call climate change and global warming. That even impacted the poor returnees who went back home. Rainfall was already unpredictable and erratic. There was too much heat and wind and wild wind. Water was very scarce because the watershed had already been degraded. A forestation project we have, of course, little, we have little success because of the, 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 the strong wind, which actually affected the, 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 I mean the rate of evapotranspiration. There were poor crop harvest for the returnees who went back home. And what happened when there is poor harvest? They went back into the nearby woodlands to make a living, to derive a livelihood. They were cutting trees, timber, and charcoal massively. But unfortunately, they were not willing to hear anyone talk about sustainable utilization. They were not actually willing to hear anyone talk about um, getting involved in tree planting or even reforestation. The power of youth involvement in our landscape changed this perception and is the center of my transformative story today. In Uganda, people involved in natural resources, I mean jobs in natural resources, are all people. The youth were not given the opportunity. But I was lucky among the many, among, among the many youth. I was given the opportunity. When I was given the opportunity, I realized that if I was to achieve, if I was to restore that landscape which was degraded for 20 years, then the best partner should be the youth. I needed the youth so much because I realized that, of course, with my interaction with them, I realized that they have a natural curiosity about science and environment. That was, where, that was where I built from. That was where I began this story. 
I realized that it was very easy to train a youth. They never asked me for training allowance. They never asked me for transport refund. But the adults who were drinking in the camp for 20 years, when you call them for a training, the first thing they would ask, transport refund. In our language, we call it Odong, Odong Dut in our language, the laws. They were asking for that. Which money wasn't there? We had, we had a problem. I mean, a youth, we look at the problem. A youth is interested in the solution to the problem. In reaching the youth, I realized that the youth were eager to contribute their energy to change our landscape, which, which, which became degraded. There were information, very good information on, on, on conservation, reforestation, landscape. But, but I realized one thing. This information were not well tailored for a traumatized person who spent 20 years in war. This information were, was, was not tailored for this youth who never went back, I mean, who never went to school for 20 years. And the first thing that I did with my colleagues, the youth, my fellow youth, was to simplify this information to touch their heart. We had to use face to face. We went to them to their schools. I went to the churches and talked to, to, talk to the church leaders. We have a problem. I went to the barracks. You have cut all these trees. 20 years. You have set fire in our whole land. You have degraded our whole land. But we need your support. You have helped us fought this war for 20 years and you have defeated coin. But we have the second war, which, which even affects you. We have got to, you have got to get involved directly. You saw that, 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 that is the green commander which is talking now, the green general talking. They, 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 they gave me a, a name, that green general. I'm not, I'm not a soldier, I'm a forester. The radio was talking about reconciliation and peace building. Reconciliation, peace building, peace, peace, peace. But the radio was not talking about the second war, climate change and global warming. The weather shift and the unpredictable rainfall. I told, I went to the, to, to, to the I mean, to the owners of those, those radios, we have got to talk about the second war. And, 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 they, and they gave me the opportunity. I, I, I was given every week, Sunday, I have a program on radio, where I talk to the communities, where I ask my fellow youth to talk to the communities. And we developed a print called Free Talk. Free Talk. With, I mean, it, has, it had illustration so that that person who never went to school would follow the illustration and would see the problem at hand. There were many, there were many projects by FAO, WLP, and, and many others. And I, I've, I told you earlier on that they were not getting the results that we wanted. I realized that they were making one mistake. You are carrying a training, a meeting, sensitization workshop of a problem which is in Warsaw. You are doing it in Netherlands. Agencies were carrying out training and workshop about a degraded landscape 200 meters away from the landscape. I realized that that wasn't good. We have got to do our training in that landscape. We have to get outside the comfort zone. We don't need to sit in, 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 in a big hotel to, to carry out a training on a degraded landscape. And so that when you're doing that, people could feel their, their landscape. They can see the problem at hand. Hmm? I would ask them, look around you. Get up, look around you. Look around you. Look. What happened to our landscape? Look at the roofs. The wind has blown the roofs. You are hearing the radio. Our girls are being raped every day. 
because going, I mean, because when they returned back home, they were going very long distance to get firewood. And they were being raped. Who cut these trees? It is me and you, our brothers. These rebels were our brothers. The soldiers were our brothers. And who will plant them? Who will suffer if something is not done? When should we do it? The time is now. We have the solution here with us. And you know, youth love competition. I have to develop competition between, between youth in schools. The competition induced innovation. It induced innovation and creativity. There was inter-school competition, inter-barracks competition, barracks competing with another barracks. Inter-school competition. Hmm? The competition made conservation interesting. It was fun and it was rewarding. We had to grow more than two million trees in three years. Two million trees, 90% indigenous. We had to begin from the available resources, local seed collection. We, I don't need to go and buy. I mean, to go, to go and buy seed. We have we had some remaining seed stand. We began from there. We constructed more than 1,500 energy saving stops in households and in schools. So that if you have the if you have the 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 the, 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 the wood lots and trees. You have got also to, to use the, 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 the stoves, which is efficient, so that you use little fuel wood. Barracks are now becoming green. People are now conscious because of our talks, communication, 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 radio. People are conscious. How much do we use in three years to grow three million trees? Three, I mean, more than two million trees. How much do we use? Less than 250,000 US dollars. And the trees are alive. But of course, these are not enough. We can do more. As youth, we have the energy. Even the longest journey begins with the first step. I did this when I spent 20 years in war. There are youth out there who can do more. They can do more. I believe that the only way to do great work is to love the job you do. And youth love their work. Having said this, do you still have doubt in youth? This is a question for you. We go ahead over and here. This is what I always tell my people when I'm training. People who spend that 20 years in war, I, I ask them, we go ahead or we end here. If you have to go ahead, then you have got to do something. The youth are there. I mean, they are willing. They are not given the opportunity. I was given the opportunity, and I had to grow two million trees in three years. Why can't you give us a chance? Thank you so much.